Hello, and thanks for checking out the experimental level editor for Tesla the Weatherman. I'm going to build a small level from scratch and try to show you most of the features along the way. To start with, let's place some solid ground. You can select the Draw Ground tool from the Layers menu, or by pressing the G hotkey, and then just draw some line segments by dragging. This continues from the previous segment by default, but if you'd like to build something isolated, you can hold the I key as you draw. And you can connect up line segments by holding J and dragging around until you see the connection you want, then let go to complete it. Note that some segments will not join because the red line has to match to another red line and the blue line to another blue line. They will not cross over. You can also continue off of any open endpoint by holding the control key and it will snap to the nearest open segment. And you can erase by pressing the E key, or also selecting Erase Ground from the Layers menu, and then just dragging over anything you want to remove. Or you can press the Backspace key to remove ground segments in reverse chronological order. I'm going to build a man-made environment, so I want some perfectly straight line segments. You can do that by holding the Shift key as you draw. And I'm going to pan by holding the right mouse button and dragging around. You can also toggle a zoom out by pressing the minus key so you can see more at once. Now let's place the player in the level. From the creatures menu, you can select Tesla and click anywhere. Let's also place the end goal, which doesn't actually do anything. This is purely a decorative item, but we can place a sensor over it and link that to a level change event to advance to another level. To move an object, you can press the M key, also available from the objects menu, object mover, and then just drag any object to position it where you'd like. You can get a list of objects by pressing the O key, or a list of creatures by pressing the C key. And I'm going to start placing some doors. And just moving them into place. Now let's place some hazards for the player to overcome. From the tools menu, you can select Hazard Area. This is what we use for things like spikes and bramble patches, and it will do damage to the player when they enter this red zone. I'm also going to put some fire down here. And I can adjust the amount of fire by going to Set Amount and then just dragging as I drag up so as I drag right, there will be more fire. As I drag left, there will be less. This seems like an appropriate amount. Now I'm going to build something to put out the fire. Because we're in an enclosed area, you won't be able to use weather powers. But I can make a rain emitter, which I want to turn off to start by pressing the T key to toggle its state. And I'm going to link it up to a button. You can do this from the Triggers menu by selecting Activation Link and just drawing between a button and what you'd like it to activate. I'm going to have it also activate this door. You can connect as many links as you'd like. And if you want it to turn something off, you could instead use a Deactivation Link. This would close a door or turn off an emitter. I'm going to build a little bit more ground here. I'm going to place an enemy behind this last door. 
The stationary Schuster, unlike the ones that roam back and forth, will only stay in one place and you can control the interval at which it fires. I'm going to set it to half a second because this is in milliseconds, that'll be 500. And I'm going to have him turned off to start with and he'll be triggered by a sensor. You can place sensors with the draw sensors tool from the triggers menu. And these are just invisible areas that do something when the player walks through them. In this case, I'm going to have the doors open as the player approaches. And this last sensor is going to also turn on the stationary Schuster. For the player to get out of the way, I'm going to place a ladder, which is also in the tools menu. They just draw a rectangular ladder area that the player can climb as they step into it. I'm going to place a box behind this door. And I'm going to place a button and some dynamite to blow up this Schuster. And I'm just going to link these together. So the idea here is the player will go up the ladder, levitate the box, depress the button, and blow up the Schuster, and then they can freely walk through to the end. Now for the end goal to work, we're going to place a TQ load event. This is an invisible object, and you can just type in the name of the level you want to go to. And then we'll place a sensor to trigger it, and an activation link. Now I'm going to set the temperature for this level to zero so that it gets really cold and once this fire is out, any water in here can freeze, thus producing a bridge to get across. Last piece of my puzzle I'm going to need is a TNT dispenser. This I will also trigger with a button. And I need to make sure that the player has the levitation power enabled. Now let's test it out. I'm toggling back out of zoom mode and hitting tab to enter play mode. Now unfortunately it looks like the player has no way to see the button that they're trying to hit. So let's try putting it somewhere a little bit closer. I've activated the rain. It's eventually going to put out the fire. But that's taking a bit too long. Let's increase the speed of this rainstorm after we reset the level. I'm going to increase the speed of this rain emitter by going to the emitters list, selecting it, and going to set amount and dragging to the right just like I did with the fire. Now let's give this another test. No, well, this isn't quite what I intended. I didn't expect the water to freeze with the fire present. So I've reset the level and I'm going to turn on the thermal overlay by pressing shift T. Now you don't see anything much because it's actually too cold. Let's turn up the temperature to 25. Now if I zoom out and I pan around, you can see that the temperature is spreading. And hopefully this will do what we want. So I'm going to turn the thermal overlay back off, zoom back in, and go into play mode one more time after I save. This time the water isn't freezing right away, 
but hopefully once the fire is out, it will be able to freeze. And it looks like it's not freezing quite fast enough, so let's try one more time. Reset the level. And we'll try a temperature closer to, let's say, 15. Let's give that a little bit of time to propagate. And once more, I'll turn that off, safe level, and try it in play mode. And there we have it. The fire is out. The ice is freezing. And the hazard area is a little bit too tall for us to walk across yet. So let's reset one more time and make the hazard area smaller. You can use the hazard eraser and just draw a new area. And let's try it out. And we've made it. Now it didn't quite work as intended because the Schuster turned to the right. So let's select him and set patrol this way, forcing him to always look in that direction. For a moving Schuster, this would cause it to move back and forth between two points. But for stationary Schuster, this just affects the direction that it's shooting. So let's reset. Select him. Set patrol and try it one more time. And we've done it! We've beat our first test level. So now that level is playable, let's make it look decent. Right now you're seeing what's called wireframe mode, but we can toggle that off so all you see are the objects until we add some painted layers. If we turn it back on, we can export an image of all the wireframe stuff in the level. And we're gonna use that as a guide for painting the layer images. Now this isn't going to be an art tutorial and I'm not the artist for this game, so I'm just going to speed through this part and keep it simple.
Now that I have a layer image, I can assign it to the layer with all the objects on it by selecting Replace Layer Image. This is going to pop me out of full screen again as I select the file. And now I'm going to turn off the wireframe. And this is what the level will look like when we actually play it. So I'm going to leave this first tutorial here, but I will be digging into some more advanced topics in a later tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section, and we'll try to address as many as we reasonably can. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy making your own levels.